My name is Jin Han. I'm a uh, iOS developer here at C Labs. So uh, today, my title is actually called uh, Being Adaptive Apps. But actually, this is a very general title. And uh, adaptivity in iOS can actually mean many things. So I may be referring to that you're building an app that uh, taking care of the specific color gamuts for different screens. Or maybe it's referring to your building an app for uh, some certain hardware features that's only available on some of the devices. But today we're not going to talk about any of them. Today we're we'll only put our focus on adaptive layout. So this is going to be our agenda. So this presentation is going to be uh, separated into three sections, namely the safety area layout margins and US review. And perhaps after these three sections, we won't have enough time to talk about some more stuff, so I put them in the list. So if you are got interested, then you can uh, go online and you can do the Google yourself. And uh, in order for you to build a clear mental model on the presentation, I'm going to structure this presentation for each of the three sections into uh, this flow. So first, I will give you an API checklist, and then I will give you a brief intro that's specific to this section. And then I'll show you a demo, which is the main part I'm going to show you what's the takeaway of today's. And then in the end, I will recap, uh, I will uh, complete the entire section with a capitulation of the demo. So now let's start with the uh, safe area. The API checklist for safe area is actually like this. There are in total five APIs, three on the UI view and two on the UI view controller. So uh, speaking of safe area, actually this is a relatively new concept that's uh, initiated by Apple two years ago since the launch of iPhone 10. And for all the devices with rectangular screens, actually the safe area spans across the entire screen. And I mean the hardware safe area right now. And uh, for iPhone 10 series, iPhone 10, iPhone 10s, 10 10s Max, actually you have this extra space on the top and bottom that's taken away from the safe area. Safe area. And that, that one is actually reserved for the sensor housing on top, as you can see. And also the bottom is, is reserved for the home indicator. So uh, if you put the iPhone 10 in the landscape mode, then you have this symmetric layout on the left and right, which is again reserved for the hardware. And now this time you have the bottom area taken out as well, and that one is for the home indicator. So for iPhone is like this, for iPad is similar, you have the top and bottom is taken away. But actually there is a one more case for the Apple devices that the safe area only reside within a particular area of the screen and not of the edge of the safe area actually reach the screen itself. So that case is actually Apple TV. So there is a concept in the uh, television manufacturing uh, industry which is called overscan composition. The basic idea is that only part of the input pictures is rendered on the screen. So some of the input signals is ignored. And Apple modeled this for the tvOS as the safe area. So if you are developing a tvOS app, actually you can just uh, config the library of stuff inside the safe area, and those stuff will be actually visible on the TV. And now we see how the, uh, how the safe area is appeared on the devices. But actually, as developers, we are more concerned with how can we access those, uh, those features and those uh, properties. So actually, Apple provided us two APIs. Both of them are on the UI view. The first one is called a safe area inset. And this one is actually a UI action inset. It's very straightforward. You have a top, have a bottom, have a left and right values that represent uh, the length of that unsafe region. And then you have this safe area layout guide, which is a UI layout guide. You can use all those nice features of UI layout guide, like the many uh, layout anchors or layout frames, if you want. So this is about how the safe area appears in uh, each UI view instance. So next, we're going to talk about how this, how the safe area behaviors will change when you have the entire view hierarchy. Uh, we have an entire set of views. So. I will have our first demo right now. So the focus of this demo, actually, the first one I will show you the, is the subview propagation. And the next one is, when you want to add in some extra assets, some extra insets to your uh, UI view, then how can you do that? And the, what is possibly the case that when you want to add in this inset? So uh, we will switch to our app. So, uh, this is the demo app that I'm going to use today. So basically, it's uh, separated into different sections. And for each section, we're going to show one or more uh, property of the implementation. 
And before we actually dive into uh, any of it, I'd like to show you the project first. So uh, first of all, I made this demo project mostly using Storyboard because it's very fast for prototyping. But uh, if you want to make it using code, it's completely fine. The API set is exactly the same, and uh, you don't have to worry about it. So uh, we're going to go into this subview propagation. Just uh, some, just to uh, clarify, actually in this view now we have two subviews. The first one is the gray colored view, which spans across the entire screen, and the second one is the white one in the middle. Actually, uh, I have a subclass for this view, which basically does nothing except it draws out the current safe area layout guide, the layout frame of the layout guide. So uh, right now we can see the yellow box is actually the safe area layout, the safe area of the outer view, and the pink. I don't know whether you can see it on this screen, but there is a pink rectangle over here. That one is actually the safe area of the, uh, the white square. So right now, we can see the safe area for the small view is actually spanned across the entire view. This is because this subview now is completely resized within the safe area of the super view. So uh, that means everywhere inside the subview is safe, so everywhere is safe area. So now let's try to move this view a little bit a little bit out of the safe area of, of its parent view. So right now you see there's a there's a pink line actually at the bottom. So now we can see the safe area has already updated for the sub view and it is actually the intersection between the sub view and the safe area of the super view. So uh, this section is actually straightforward because basically it, mean, it means that anywhere unsafe that for a parent probably means it's unsafe for you too. But this statement is not always true. So let's try to move this view even further. So we see, actually there is a limit for the safe area to update. If you move beyond this limit, actually the view will stop, will stop updating its super view. Maybe uh, for the guys that are in the, in the back, we can show you on the top, the behavior is the same. So if you are carefully enough, then we can see that this limit actually is the safe area inside of its parent view. So that means the, the largest safe area inside of the subview is actually the safe area inside of the parent view. And the reason for this actually is for the sake of the animation. So imagine this view is actually a panel that is sliding up from the bottom. And you want to do this animation nicely. So if this view, if this behavior doesn't exist there, then probably your animation will start from a line which has a zero width, a zero height, and everything will be squeezed, squeezed, squeezed sorry, together. So that is not the behavior that we want. So I guess this behavior is the general way it works for everybody here. And then we go to the next one, which is the additional safe area inside. So for this view controller, uh, I'm actually adding a safe area inside on all of the edges on the top, bottom, left, and right. So if you want to do this as well, it's actually very easy. There is a there is a, a property under the UI view controller. So this class is a this class is a subclass of the UI view controller, and there is a property called additional safe area inside. You can see it, right? But that's important. Uh, okay. So uh, what you need to do is actually just to assign any UI edge inside instead, any UI edge inside to this property, and the view, the uh, safe area inside and safe area layout guide of the view will be automatically adjusted. Perhaps right now you might be wondering, uh, what is the case that I really want to make use of this property? So what is the case that, first of all, what, what is the case that Apple used this property? Actually, uh, for all the uh, first party classes like UI navigation controller, UI tab bar controller, uh, we're using this property right now in, uh, I think it's uh, from iOS 11 and onwards. Uh, if you have noticed, actually we have those navigation bars and uh, when those navigation bars is translucent, uh, actually our content of the child view controller can go beneath the bars. And actually, Apple is doing this, is doing this kind of behavior, is adjusting all those inside safe areas using this property. And one of the cases that I can think of that we as developers might want to make use of this property is about the, the keyboard handling. So I guess for most of the app, if not all, we might want to uh, take care of the keyboard handling because uh, perhaps for most of the app we have 
to accept some certain kind of test input. So if you want to do this, then actually the work is not, it's not really trivial. You need to observe to those keyboard anim animations. You need to extract what is the height of the keyboard, what is the animation time, what is the curve, and you need to do the animation. You need maybe uh, even even worse, you may need to do a secondary layout just specifically for the view that with the keyboard is visible. But actually, if you want to do this for every sprint, then it becomes uh, really a mess. Whenever you have some kind of logic adjustment, you need to do it everywhere. So my solution for that, for this demo app, is actually we have this view controller as a subclass of UI view controller. It is the parent, and it is, it is the root. It has a child view controller, in this case I call it content view controller. So this controller, the job is simply observe for the keyboard events, namely these are keyboard will change frame, will show and will hide. And it will extract out the parameters from the notification. And it will assign the correct value to the additional secondary inside of inner view controller. And then lastly, we will do an animation. So what is the result of this? Maybe we can show it in the app. I actually provided uh, two examples over here. The first one is uh, with a scroll view, so we can see. Actually, this view, it doesn't even have a customized view controller. I just created this view using the storyboard. So basically, it has a scroll view. We can see the uh, safe area inside is already incorporated into the common inside here. And we have a UI text view. So when I tap this, we have the keyboard. And we see the, the content inside is already automatically adjusted when the keyboard is visible. So for the other case, this UI text view in the manual, can you see it? Can you see it right now? So there is a, there is a UI text view in the middle, and it's actually aligned with the uh, center Y anchor of the safe area layout guide. So when the keyboard is visible, the actually the position of this view is automatically adjusted according to the La, uh, the latest uh, set area layout frame. So uh, actually, all of these behaviors are come for free when you uh, actually write in your sub view control, uh, your child view controllers. Uh, you just what you need to do is just to lay out your stuff according to the set area uh, layout type. But actually, there is uh, some drawbacks of this, of course, because this API is only available from iOS 11. So if you're supporting some kind of device that's before this, then perhaps you still need to uh, stick to the old way. And there's a, another drawback is, uh, right now, I, I can show you my storyboard. This keyboard container view controller instance is actually the initial view controller of my entire app. So sometimes this can create some kind of problems that Maybe uh, your app is really complex and you have certain screens that it doesn't want this behavior. But uh, it's relatively easy to overcome. You can just provide maybe a customized property on, the, on the, uh, your view controller. Or you can just wrap this view controller just outside of the controller that you will directly need it. So I think that one is fine. And that's about the additional safe area I want to talk about. So we can return to the slides. Let's do a short recap. So what is the propagation behavior of safe area? The safe area of the subview is actually, in one word, is the intersection between the subview and the safe area of its parent view. But in some cases, the safe area will not be updated. It's because the maximum safe area inside of the subview will be the safe area inside of its parent view. And in the case that you want to add in some additional safe area inside to your child view, Actually, the correct way to do it is to associate a view controller with it, and you set this property called additional safe area inside of your view controller. Then uh, all of your uh, subviews and uh, the safe area insets, the safe area layout guide will be adjusted automatically for you. So let's, now let's come back to see this API list again. We have covered the safe area inset, the safe area layout guide, and in the UI view controller, we have covered additional safe area insets. For the two callback methods we haven't mentioned yet, but we'll talk, to, talk about them together later with the call, uh, callback method of the layout margins. So uh, let's talk about layout margins. Again, for the API checklist, there is a uh, six API under the UI view is related to uh, layout margins. Four of them we might be already very familiar with. 
layout margins, layout margin guides, directional layout margins, and layout margins they change. And we have maybe these two are less familiar with. They are uh, the incest layout margins from safe area preserve super view layout margins. So we'll talk about these two uh, later in the demo. And uh, for the UI view controller, we have this uh, callback method, which is similar to the layout margin they change in the UI view. We have view layout margins they change. And we have two methods that's related to the system minimum layout margins, which we will talk about in the demo as well. So uh, what about layout margins? The diagram looks very similar to the safe area. So again, we have a UI layout guide, which is called the layout margins guide. And again, you can use the layout frames and all the layout entries. But the difference between the layout margins and the safe area, actually, for the insights part, now we have two properties. The first one is the layout margins, and we also have a directional layout margins. So what's the difference? Layout margins is a UI edge inset. It has a property of top, bottom, left, and right. But in comparison, directional layout margins is an NS directional edge inset. So instead of left and right, now it has the leading and true. So perhaps when you are dealing with some language that reads from right to left, and maybe the one that you want will be the directional layout margins. But this API, again, is available only from iOS 11. So uh, if you are supporting older devices, you have two ways. The first one is you calculate, and you, you find out what is the leading and trading as well. The second way is that you just use the, the layout margin guide, and that one supports the leading and trading. So our second demo. Uh, in this demo, I will show you four things. The first one is what is the system minimum layout margin. And uh, the second one is the intersection uh, the, the interaction between layout margins and safe area. And then we'll talk about the propagation behavior of margins, what's the difference and uh, what's the similarities. And, and then the, lastly, we'll talk about the callback behaviors for the layout margin to change and safe area to change. So let's return to our demo app. The next section. So when I get into the, this, this section, actually, you can see two rectangles. The first one is the yellow one, which represents the safe area of the entire view. And the blue one is actually the layout margins of the entire view. So perhaps you have already noticed there is a, a left and right padding on this view, and that is actually the system minimum layout margins. This margins is provided by the system, and uh, I think as developers we shouldn't do any overridden on this property. Uh, this, this property, is, is, by the way, is under the UI view controller. So if you do not really want this property to affect your layout, there is an option, a property on the UI view controller as well, called a view respect system minimum layout margins. So if you turn this off, then we can see the, the blue box actually tends to fill the, the yellow box completely. So we're going to try it again. So this is about the system minimum layout margins. And what about the interaction between layout margins and safe area? So in this case, in order to make it clear, I added additional safe area inside for this view controller, 100 points on top and bottom, and 32 points on the left and right. So uh, we already noticed that the, right now the safe area march, uh, the, the, the layout margin is calculated from the safe area. So if you don't want this behavior, this behavior is actually by default because uh, Sometimes when we're doing, when we're dealing with you know, layout margins, we don't want to put our stuff outside of the safe area. So uh, Apple decides to make it as a default behavior. But if you do not want this, there is a property on the UI view called uh, inside layout margins from safe area. So if you turn this off, then we can see actually the layout margins will span, will be calculated based on the bounds of the view instead of safe areas. So we try 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 it again. So again, we have a left and right padding, and that's the system minimum layout margin. So what's about the propagation for the layout margins? In this view, we have, uh, firstly, the white, the white background view, that's the, the larger view, the parent view, and then we have a sub view, which has a yellow background. And the blue box, if you can see, well, the color is a uh, bit messed up. But Okay, but, uh, yeah, but, but there is a blue box. You can see the edge here, right? So uh, this blue box is referring to the layout margin of the super view. And there is a white background 
bars, and that one is the layout margin of the child view. So by default, the layout margins between the, the layout margins of the super view and child view doesn't affect each other because the layout margins is actually a relatively independent stuff for each views, and uh, generally we do not want them to affect each other. But if you, in your case, you really have a need to make it propagate to the sub view, then you have this option under the UI view called preserves super, super view layout margins. So if you turn this on, then we can see the layout margin layout the layout margin guys layout frame is actually will shrink to suit for the uh, layout margins of your parent view. By far, I think. These three properties are relatively easy and straightforward to understand. So uh, let's talk about some callback behaviors. So for the callback, actually we don't really need to look at the screen because the screen is empty. And I prepared some little quizzes for you guys. So I give you some context first. This little controller is very simple, nothing is inside. And uh, this is a child view controller which is going to be pushed to a uh, navigation stack. So I have four quiz questions for you. Basically, there are just four functions, and I have some very simple statements inside. And I'm going to either call them here, in view develop, or here, in view data here. So maybe we'll try this first. If I type quiz, quiz zero here in the view below, and we'll print A in the safe area inside the change callback, and we'll print B in the layout margin the change callback. So, can you guys think of what is going to be the final output after everything is done? Can I have some response? Definitely A. Only A? No, actually we can, we can see it. Let's try to run this. more and more straightforward. So let's do it one by one. So ah, we got the first B. And uh, we have a very long sorry, we have a very long stack trace over here, but I just want to want you to notice one of them. Oh shit. It's actually this line. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Okay, now my, I'll read off for you. Let's get back to the original. And this line reads, UI view underscore update safe area inset. And this happens because we are pushing this view controller into a navigation stack. A navigation controller, as I mentioned just now, actually provides some additional safe area inset. And plus, we are using an iPhone 10, so the device itself already has some hardware safe area inset. So, whenever Remember, whenever you update your separate inside, your, your layout margin is actually calculated based on the latest value of this separate inside. And for some reasons, if we see the next callback, it's, it's the separate inside the chain, right? It's actually firing from the same methods. Again, the update separate inside. So for some reason, Apple decides to call the layout margin update first before the separate inside uh, the chain. So uh, that one, I think, is uh, just a fact that we need to remember. But the whole process is actually initiating from this safe inside update by the SuperView controller. And then we have the next one, the next B. 
the next day you will have an even longer trace. And uh, I think the important method of this is called this. So UI view controller update content over the E set with our red in bounds of ancestor view controller. V immediate child of ancestor. Maybe this method sounds very confusing, but actually what it does is actually adjusting your system minimum layout margins. So remember, we have a system minimum layout margin. And by default, we didn't set any of the layout margins for this view controller. So there is a minimum one that applies to it, and this is the time that the system is doing this adjustment. So that's why there is a second B for this. So I think uh, we are clear about the quiz zero because we haven't done anything yet. Quiz zero is empty. So what about we try the next quiz? Quiz one. In quiz one, we still call this in a beauty load, but right now we are assigning a, the directional layout margins to have a value of lean 20 and the training 20. So what about the output right now? Let's try to run this again. It's BDA. I may be quite surprised, but actually it's still fine. We can understand what the BA is, right? It's uh, still calling from the safe area. But what about the first B? And where is the, our last B? So the first B is actually calling directly from here. So again, if we turn on this grid point, I'm gonna try, try it again. We can see in the stack trace. Actually, this is calling from our own methods. It's the quiz view controller does quiz one. So whenever you update this property, it will trigger a callback immediately. And then since this has a lean of 20 and trading of 20, but our system minimum layout margin is actually a lean of 16 and trading of 16 in the case of UI view controller. So after you're doing this, and after the system adjusts its safe area inside, and then they found actually all your layout margins is already larger than the system minimum layout margin. So there is no more update triggered, so the last B is not happening. And then we we'll have this quiz two. Quiz two, in contrast with quiz one, actually, I changed from 20 to five. And actually, the result of this, I'm, I'm not going to run it again, you can see the answer over here, is actually BBAB. The last B appears because the, this layout margin now is smaller than the system minimum layout margin. So the system minimum layout margin updates the layout margin of this view again. So we have another callback. And for the quiz three, it's about the safe error inset. And in this case, since this property is a UI view controller, and we're assigning them inside the view deep load, and at this time, the safe area inset is not updated by super view controller yet. So it doesn't matter. This line actually doesn't affect any of the output. So in this line, quiz three will be the same as quiz A, which will have a BAB. So uh, I want to skip the part for view did appear because after view did appear, basically the, uh, the system has already adjusted the safe area inset. So basically for the answers, all will start with a BAB. And what's next, actually depending on what have you changed. If you change the safe area inset, then it's a BA. If you only change the layout margins and it's greater than the uh, system minimum layout margins, then it's only a B. If you are setting a layout margin that's smaller than the system minimum layout margins, then it's going to be nothing. So uh, I hope you are clear with this, and we're going to return to our slides. Let's have a recap. So about the system minimum layout margin, and this is a, a, a property under the UI view controller, and if you do not want this, you can simply flip this property, view respect system minimum layout margin to false, then you view will completely be laid out, your layout margins will completely be calculated based on the value that you provide. And by default, the layout margins is calculated based on your safe error inset. And if you do not want this behavior, then you can flip this inset layout margins from safe error to false. Then your layout margins will be calculated from your bounds. And by default, there is no propagation for layout margins. But if you want, 
there's a property under the UI view called preserve super view layer margins. You can make it to true, and your layer margin will start to propagate. And again, when a view controller is being shown, actually the first method, the first relevant method in this case is called is, is the view view will appear and something happens. And view the move to window callback will be called. And after that, the the UIP will update the safe error inside to that view. And then after that, the UI navigation controller will handle its own system minimum layout margin. And this explains what, why the behavior is like that as we're showing in the demo. And then in the end, in the very last end, the, the controller dot view did appear will show finally. And when the safe error inside is shown, if you didn't turn off turn off the option that to uh, that to tell UI key do not calculate your layout margins based on the safe area inside. Actually, the layout margin callbacks are always called before the safe area callbacks. And the view callbacks are always called before the controller's callbacks. So let's return back to this API checklist again. We have covered the layout margins, layout margin guides, directional layout margins, some margin they change. And we'll also cover these two relatively uh, use less often the, the less often, uh, often used methods, and we also cover the system minimum layout margins in your view controller, and uh, also the callback, the view layout margins they change. And then we have our scroll view. So the API for scroll view is also quite easy. There is one automatically adjust scroll view, view, scroll view inset on the UI view controller, and uh, we have six on the UI view, our uh, UI scroll view. The bounds, content size, content inside, uh, content offset, and content inside are actually quite commonly used. We use it every day. And uh, there is uh, one more uh, newly added API called uh, Adjusted Content Inside, which is added in iOS 11. And finally, we'll have this Content Inside Adjustment Behavior. And uh, that will be our focus for this section. So let's first talk about some fundamentals. So um, you can think of a US scroll view as a picture frame. And the bounds of the scroll view is actually the frame itself. And the content of the scroll view is the actual picture content of your, of your picture frame. So right now we have a bound, a bound size of uh, 400 points height. If we, have, if we have a content height which is larger than the frame height, then we can scroll this content. So in this case, we have a content size of height 500. And right now, the top edge of the content is aligning with the top, the top edge of the frame. So right now we have a content offset of zero. And now, if we scroll to the bottom, then we see the content offset is updated from 0 to 100. And if we're going back, then the content offset is reset. And we have this uh, new concept called content inset. And this probably actually only referring to some extra area that you can scroll your scroll view to. So right now it's 0 because uh, this is the limit that we can scroll our scroll view. If we update to 40, that means we have some extra space on top that we can scroll or scroll view into. And then if we scroll to the bottom, basically nothing changed because we haven't adjust the common inside of bottom. But if we scroll back, now common offset can be negative 40. So this idea of common inset becomes very important, I think, since iOS 7 because uh, we have all those translucent bars and generally we want to put our content to uh, beneath those bars and we have those nice uh, and beautiful blurs. Uh, this is the reason why Apple provided this API. It's the automatically adjust scroll view insights on the UI controller. It's there means to help us to uh, help us to adjust all the common insights of the UI scroll view so you don't have to calculate all those bar height yourself. The UI key will do it for you. But there is a one big problem of this. Because the, when the UI key tries to do this adjustment, it's actually updating the value of the content inside of your scroll view. If you have some very complex, complicated view logic, that maybe you have a header on top of the scroll view that you want to set the content inside yourself, the UI key update will overwrite your change. And that will cause some issues. It's a, either you update happens before the UI key updates, then you, your update is lost, or your update is after UI key's update, then UI key's update is lost. So uh, your content will have to overlap with something. So that's not good. So Apple decides to deprecate this API, and instead provide another API called Adjusted Content Inset. 
And this one is actually very straightforward, and it's under US preview. And uh, adjusted content inside is actually just a net value after you sum the content inside and the system inside. The content inside now is fully controlled by the developers. So the system will not try to update any value of this content inside anymore. And the system inside will basically mean all those uh, safer inside, for example. And uh, another thing to take note of is that this one, this property is a get only property. It's read really only. So we cannot, you cannot do any like ugly stuff with it. And let's get back to this diagram again. So right now we have a kind of inside of zero on top, and a safe area inside on top is zero. So the adjusted kind of inside will be zero. So again, the top edge of this view of the of the content is actually aligned with the top edge of the screw view. And if we're adding some safe area inside, the color inside is not changed because that's controlled by the developers. But the adjusted color inside is changed. And in response, the UI view will update its layout according to this updated adjusted color inside. So now let's try to remove this color inside, try to add a sub view. So just now we have mentioned that the UI view will, by default, propagate the safe area inside to its sub views. So when I try to scroll my scroll views up, part of my sub views will actually go beyond the safe area of super view. So what happens right now? Maybe now you're thinking of, okay, so my sub view will start receiving some safe area update events, and maybe my layout will be updated as well. Actually, that's not the case. Because in this case, the scroll view has already incorporated the safe area inside into its adjusted content inside. So it will stop propagating the safe area inside into its sub view. Because if you think about it, actually, you, when you incorporate the safe area inside into your adjusted content inside, you are already handle this inside once. So if you are propagating this to your sub view again, it's like a double counting for the same value. So that's not logical. So uh, to help us like manage and uh, control this kind of uh, propagation behavior and uh, adjust the content inside adjustment behavior, we have this new property called uh, content inside adjustment behavior. And actually, it is an uh, enumeration under the UI scroll view. It has four cases, always scrollable access, automatic, and never. And we're going to show them one by one in the demo. So in this demo, uh, first of all, we'll have a look through of all the options. And then I'll show you some of the pitfalls of the options. So uh, let's get back to here. <coughs> so here uh, we have this coming inside adjustment behavior section. So the first of all is about always. Always right now seems actually completely fine. So we have the the top inside adjusted, so we don't have any overlap content under the navigation bar. And the bottom safe area is also adjusted. And we can see that actually the scroll wheel will go beneath the bar and have the blur, blur effect. But actually, this is not the issue. But the issue happens when you try to when you try to have your phone in the landscape mode. So right now immediately we see there is a white region on the left. And if you try to touch it, so you can see this scroll view right now is actually horizontally scrollable. The reason for this is actually we're setting the, auto, uh, the content inside adjustment behavior to automatic. And that means it's going to incorporate a safe area from all directions. If it's in landscape mode, that means on the left hand side and right hand side we have the hardware safe area inside. So it's going to make your scrollable area larger. And it's larger, it's, and it's larger than the bounds of your scroll view. So that makes the, this scroll view to be horizontally scrollable. So imagine this scroll view is a UI table view, then the table view will become horizontally scrollable, and uh, that is very weird. So we don't want this behavior in general. And then we have the next behavior called uh, scrollable access. Scrollable access actually is there mean to solve the issue that happens just now. So right now, the, the scroll view will only adjust its content inside on the axis that is scrollable. So right now, if you put this phone in horizontal mode, I will see that this one is no longer horizontally scrollable because uh, the UI scroll view doesn't incorporate the safe area inside on the left and right into its adjusted content inside because in this axis, the scroll view is not scrollable. 
So it seems fine, but this is only for the long content. If your content is short, for example, this case, then let's see what's happened. It's actually part of the content is overlapped with the navigation bar. And you can, cannot scroll this anymore. Because the content is shorter than the frame height of the UI scroll view, so the UI key will think, OK, this scroll view is not scrollable. So it will stop and incorporate those safeguard inset into the, into the adjusted coming inset. And that will result in this overlap. There are two ways to resolve this. The first one is you set this property, it's called always bounce vertical, to true, and to tell UI key explicitly that this axis is scrollable. But this one has some side effects. That means if your content size is uh, shorter than the frame height, your, your frame height, then your scroll view is always scroll, can always bounce vertically. Sometimes we may want this behavior, but sometimes we may, we may not. So in the case that you really don't want this behavior, then we have the next option called automatic. So automatic basically behaves the same, the same way as scrollable access, but the difference is now, for even for the content size which is uh, shorter than the frame height of the of the UI scroll view, you will still have this adjustment for this axis. And again, if you are uh, in the landscape, it will behave the same way as the scrollable axis. So basically, this one, this automatic, will be the one that we will mostly use. But however, there is a another issue with this. So if, we, if you still remember this API, maybe it's, uh, the font is too small on the screen, but it's the automatically adjust the screw view insights under the UI view controller. If you still have this API, if you have some kind of legacy code, and previously you decide to set this API to default and you adjust your content inside of this yourself, and now if you set, set this content adjustment behavior to automatic, then it will disable all the nice features that we have talked about just now. So right now, it will just behave the same way, exactly the same way as the scroll axis. So right now you cannot scroll, and the content is overlapped under the navigation bar. But for long, for longer content, actually it's still fine. And in the end, we'll have the, the only last case, which is never. So never is also very straightforward. That means the UI scroll will, will not cooperate any of the safe error insights into its adjusted content inside. But this one have some side effect. That means the UI scroll view will start to propagate the safe area to its subviews. So basically the idea is whenever the scroll view doesn't incorporate a safe area into its adjusted content inside, then it will propagate this safe area to its subview. So right now, I'm actually this top label is a subview of the first blue box. And I'm layouting the layouting the label against the safe area layout guide and the top edge. So right now, if we try to scroll this, we see the relative position of the top label actually changes inside this, inside this super view. Sometimes we may make use of this behavior to create some very interesting effects, but sometimes, actually most of the times, we do not want this behavior. So the same thing will happen at the bottom as well. So if you drag through this, we see the relative position of this label actually changes in its super view. So that's about the never case of this content inside adjustment behavior. And let's have a short recap of this demo. So for the case always, some issues is if, if you have some kind of unexpected system inset, and this will result in some extra adjusted content inside of your, your screw view. And this will give you a larger scrollable, ex uh, scrollable area, and in the end, you will have an extra access to, to, to scroll in some ways. And then we have the scrollable access, but the problem of this one is that if you have an insufficient content size, that means the access is not scrollable to your keys. And that means there will be no adjustment applied to that, the, maybe it's the top and bottom, maybe it's the left and right, to those uh, safe area inset. And this may result in some unexpected overlap. And for the automatic, generally this is the one that we're going to use, but we need to be careful with the deprecated API, the automatically adjust scroll view in insets. 
So uh, I will suggest that we do a version check on this. So if you are still on some older, uh, some, some, on some older versions, you can maybe you can turn this thing off and you do the adjustment yourself. But on the later, like uh, iOS 11, iOS 12, then perhaps you should use this automatic one. And then in the end, we have this never. And never means no adjustment. No adjustment means the safe error from all directions will be propagated to the subroutes. And sometimes that means when you scroll, some of the layout of your subroute will change. So let's get back to this API challenge again. We have talked about the deprecated automatic adjusted, uh, automatically adjusted scroll view index inset. And uh, we have talked through all the properties listed here for the UI scroll view. And uh, this is a combination. For UI view, we have talked about nine. You have your controller, we have top about six, and you have screw view six. And what's next about a uh, adapter layout? I think we are already a bit over time. So uh, if you're interested, there are still some readable common layout guide uh, available in the URV controller and uh, in, uh, in UI table view as well. And you have some uh, safe error related APIs in the UI table, table view. And you have these sizing classes, which is their main for you to like create completely different layout for iPhones or iPads or uh, landscape and uh, portrait mode, and you have this dynamic type of fonts. So uh, you can download the slides and demo in these URLs, and uh, these are the two references that I used when I prepared this talk. Actually, uh, this video, this is a video from uh, the WWDC last year. Actually, it covers most of our topic today. If you are still have something that's unclear and you're interested. Please go ahead to watch this video, it's very nice. And yeah, most importantly, that's the hurry. So if you're interested, please go to the tutorial you can or you can uh, visit our HRs. I think it's all there. They are playing your phones. Okay. And uh, thanks very much. <laughs>